Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I want to show you how I paint one of those new skin cavalry units, the Reptodon Lancels or Chargers I believe they're called. Um, Games Workshop kindly sent me some of these to test out and paint up and uh, I just couldn't wait to put some very bright colors on it. And before I start the tutorial, I, I'm a little bit sorry because I'm not going to show you the entire paint process, which is because after I had primed the model white, which I usually do with all my models, I actually used my airbrush just to put a little bit of color on it. And uh, I don't have a very good airbrush set up and I also really suck at airbrushing, so I did not film that part. Um, but I can tell you what I did. I used three different airbrush colors. Uh, well, not different. They're not airbrush colors as such. They are inks, uh, liquid sex inks. The yeah, they look really beat up. So I used a, a green and a yellow and a dark blue for the shadows, and then I used a blue one for the lighter blue parts that you'll see in just a bit. So uh, these four colors I used with an airbrush, and I, I I'm not good good at airbrushing, and I think I could perhaps more or less just as easily as done have, have done this by hand but i really want to try out my airbrush because it has just uh, been collecting dust for the past six months and then um, yeah i still suck at it so it'll probably collect dust after this uh, painting pro project is uh, is done but yeah i gave it a go at least so uh, now you know uh, what i did uh, to get to the starting point so uh, let's get painting so here you can see what it looked like after my not very um, well executed airbrushing. I don't know, it's just, I can't really seem to get the hang of it. Anyways, I grabbed one of my contrast paints. This one I think is Sigwald Burgundy. It's a pinkish one that I watered down a lot. Uh, and I used that to enhance the shadows. And I used a pinkish tone because it's sort of a contrasting color to the green and, and, and yellow. And so I think I thought it would add a little bit more visual interest than if I just used a darker green, for instance. Then I took another contrast paint. This one is called Striking Scorpion Green, and it is such a very vivid green color. And I used that to try and sort of more like a glaze, uh, so relatively uh, thin and not with a lot of paint on the brush. And I tried to uh, put that on the entire model basically to tie it all together because right now it has a, sort of a very recognizably airbrushed look to it that I don't really like. After I had done that, I took the Sigwald Burgundy again and I outlined each of the feathers. This model is a little bit tricky to paint actually because it has some places where it's... Um, more like feathers and some where it's like scales and other parts where it's a little bit tricky to see. Uh, as you can see, I also used the Sigwald Burgundy just to enhance some of the shadows that I thought weren't uh, pronounced enough. Then I thinned out the, uh, the color and I used that to cover every part of the model that I thought would be mostly feather or uh, the scales on the forearms and legs. Um, then I painted every single scale um, with a color called turquoise oxide, which is also the blue color I used for high brushing, uh, the uh, for airbrushing, sorry, um, the model originally. And um, as you can see, it looks a little bit silly now because the entire back is sort of blue and then I am painting all the feathers blue and uh, I ended up not really liking that look, but I thought, um, yeah, it was a process, so I, I would just uh, see where it took me. I did not have the entire thing planned out. Then I took one of my favorite colors, which is of course a, a pink color, uh, which is probably no surprise to anyone who has been following this channel for any length of time. This one is called Pulse Wave Pink, and I painted that on top of the blue on the, on the feathers. After I had used the Pulse Wave Pink, I took another pink color. This one is called Cyber Pink, and they're both both of them are from Huge Miniatures, and they're fluorescent paints. And I used that as a sort of a highlight on every single little feather, and also on the scales on the forearms and legs. Then I decided that the blue color on the back of the model just did not work out. Not not so much because I didn't like the color, which I actually did. But because I, I remembered that my original plan was to paint the skink blue and it would just, it would look too much samey if it was blue on top of the 
uh, of the Raptodon exactly where I was going to place the blue skink rider. So I painted it green. And I used a couple of layers of the striking scorpion green and I used it uh, more as a contrast paint here and then uh, just decided this was what I wanted it to look like. So I was quite happy with the green color and I think it came out nice. And even though it was not the original intention. So there you go with my brilliant airbrushing plan anyway. <laughs> and then I started highlighting the uh, scales and I used Starfire Yellow, which is also one of the fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures. I also used Sapphire Yellow here with, in combination with the Striking Scorpion Green as a glaze, trying to highlight the muscles and give them a little bit more definition and make them look a little bit more like you can actually see, see where the light is hitting the muscles and, uh, and trying to give them a little bit of definition. I have not worked very much with glazes before. I have done a little bit, but it's, it's, it's a relatively new technique for me uh, uh, because I usually just paint mostly stuff that has armor or cloth or scales so I do not have to do smooth blends to make skin work. Um, so it's relatively new but I find it's actually a nice challenge trying to do something different and trying to get a little bit out of my comfort zone. And here you can see I'm just adding layers and layers and layers of glazing to get uh, to a relatively smooth blend. In the end, I decided that now uh, my pain sh I had run, run out of patience. Um, so I just, um, yeah, <laughs> I just uh, decided that enough was enough, even though you could probably add 50 more glazes if you wanted to, or perhaps you were really good at glazing, which I'm not. So uh, yeah, I decided that that was fine. Um, then I took the um, turquoise oxide that I used as the base color for the uh, for the blue, and I mixed that with a contrast paint called Luxion Purple, which is a very nice, vibrant, rich purple color. And I used those two for the sort of feathery mohawk that uh, the Raptodon's got on its head. Um, and I really liked this color. It was actually a nice, vibrant, bluish purple color. And so I decided also to use that uh, on the tail as well. Also just because, I mean, I did not want 50 different colors. I mean, it's going to be bright enough as it is. Then I just did some more glazing just because, uh, I mean, now I was, I, I'm trying to learn. So I'm, I'm working, working with glazing and trying to see if I can get it to work. And I just added a little bit more of the blue color for each layer of glaze that I, that I put on the model. Um, trying to make it relatively smooth while at the same time not, I, I mean, I did not want to spend as much time on this part as I did on the on the skin because I knew I was going to be covering this in, in texture uh, further on. Uh, then the last layer with the blue was just simply the blue turquoise oxide, which is uh, it's a pigment from a uh, liquid pi pigment from Green Stuff World. And when I was uh, quite happy with that, I started adding in some uh, texture. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but I go back to my two favorite pink colors, the Pulse Wave Pink first, as you can see here, trying to draw in some um, some lines that suggest that this is actually uh, a feather that has these small, um, yeah, this, this kind of design on it or, or this kind of texture on it. And once I was happy with that, I took the Cyber Pink and added some highlights as well. And the last layer of highlight was just a tiny touch of, uh, of white that I just added to the to the top and then to the edges of uh, of the feathers. Then I thought that um, the feathers looked just a little bit samey perhaps with just the blue and the pink and the purple. And so I decided why not uh, highlight um, the top of each feather with just a tiny touch of the neon yellow, the starfire yellow also from Huge Miniatures, just to really make it pop. And also there's a tiny dot at the top of each feather and so I decided uh, also to use the neon yellow uh, to enhance uh, the look of that. And that was more or less the Raptodon done and so I started working on the skink and he was also airbrushed as you can see. I used the dark blue ink um, as the first layer and then I used the uh, turquoise oxide from Green Stuff World after that. And then I again took my Sigwald Burgundy and started putting in some uh, shadows and again using the um, use, using the uh, pink sort of as a contrasting color, making the hopefully the shadows look a little bit more interesting. 
Uh, generally, the ideas for painting the skin is something I picked up from a video by Vince Venturella. He's had got a nice, nice video about painting blue skin uh, that I will le link to in the uh, in the show notes. And I mean, I can't paint blue skin even like 10% as well as Vince Venturella. So you're better off following his advice and my advice, but still I can tell you what colors are used uh, to achieve this look. So um, I started off, as I said, with the turquoise oxide, and then I just put in layers of a little bit more of, of white um, just to highlight it. And then after I had done a couple of glazes with that, I ran out of patience again with the glazing. It's something I need to work on. I added some uh, some of the Starfire Yellow, the neon, neon Yellow, again to the mix of white and uh, turquoise and used that as the final layer of highlight. And um, I think it worked really well. Um, it is also an idea I got from uh, Vince Venturella's video, even though uh, I think he, su he suggests using a cool, I think it's called Ice Yellow or something. Um, and not a neon color, um, but I think the effect is more or less the same. Then for the scales on his back, I used again the Sigurd Burgundy, just uh, completely as a normal uh, contrast paint here, just lots and lots of it, because I really wanted it uh, down in the uh, cracks and crevices behind, between each scale, just to really make it pop. And again, I'm using... Um, a pink color here, which is going to be a contrasting color for the green that I want to have on top of the, uh, on top of each scale. Then, as a base color for the scales, I use a color called emerald green, which is from the Duncan Rhodes paint set. And uh, I know I've said it before, but I really like working with these colors. They're very easy to work with and very smooth. Um, I borrowed them from a friend, and at some point he probably wants to have them back, um, and he can. But I mean, he said I could use them for as long as I like. So um, yeah, uh, anyways, <laughs> back back to painting the skin. I just really like these colors and you can never have enough colors, right? Then for the first layer of highlights, I use another paint from Duncan Rhodes and this one is called Ethereal Green. Um, it is more or less a match, I think, for the mood green from uh, Citadel. So it's a really nice vibrant green. And as you can see here, try to make sure that the uh, scales that are in the center of uh, of his back, which sort of stick out a little bit more, uh, that you can see this almost crystalline um, crystalline design that they have, and then the other scales which are more flat, I just do an edge highlight all the way around them. And lastly, I again uh, grab my Starfire Yellow, the neon uh, yellow paint, and I use that as a a uh, nice, very vibrant highlight here. Then I decided that because he has sort of a feather um, accessory um, in, well, it's not his hair, but I think you get the idea in his headpiece. I decided that that was going to be a completely different color to the rest of the model. And so I painted it red using, uh, I think, just ordinary Mephiston red from Citadel. After I was done with the Mephiston Red, I grabbed another contrast paint. This one is called Eldari Emerald, so it's sort of a green color. And I used that to do a little bit of definition of where you can see, again, sort of the strands in the feather go. Then I took another fluorescent paint. This one is called um, La uh, Radar Red, also from Huge Miniatures. And I just used that to do the first layer of highlights. Then for the second layer of highlights, I used another fluorescent paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Laser Orange. And uh, I just used that, I think, on two thirds of the feather or something like that. And lastly, I used again a bit of the Starfire Yellow to uh, highlight the very edge of the feather. Um, I actually don't mind that I use Starfire Yellow as a highlight on so many different parts of the model, because as you can see here, I actually think it it helps tie it very nicely together. I used the um, the turquoise oxide from Green Stuff World and the uh, Starfire Yellow on a lot of uh, the parts of the model. And I, I think it, it really helps tie it together because I do know that this is a model that has a lot of colors. Uh, you could definitely go for a simpler paint job, but I just, I just really enjoy these bright colors and I like that there are so many of them. And as you can see, because I use so many fluorescent paints, of course, it also glows in the dark, which, as I have said many times before, has no, absolutely no practical value whatsoever. 
it's just cool. It's just fun and I like it and I love the idea that I could, you know, I mean, I could, I could actually take my Sarah von Army to a rave party and they wouldn't feel out of place, which is somehow um, just so silly and so stupid that it is amazing. Well, at least to me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this was uh, my first uh, experience of painting the new uh, the new line of Seraphon models. And I have to say that I am definitely not disappointed. They were also actually really easy to build. Um, yeah, the, uh, when on the sprue, you, it's very easy to see how they are supposed to be put together. You don't even need the uh, instruction booklet or anything. It's very, very easy to work with. So that was a nice bonus because I hate building models and this was actually not uh, that uh, big of a task. I also really liked painting it and I think it's very fun. It was also quite time consuming uh, painting it like this. So I'm going to do another vid video where I show you an easier way of achieving not the same result, but something a little bit similar to this. So uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned for, for that video as well. Well, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you feel about the new Seraphon models in general? Uh, what do you think about this uh, paint job in particular? Do you have any ideas or suggestions or things you'd like to see me paint in the future? Any sort of thing. Uh, every comment is uh, of course very uh, welcome and I try to respond to every single one. So let me know what you think and also remember if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects you can do so on Dyson Demons and uh, both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I would love to uh, I would love to share my uh, my painting journey with you guys uh, there as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.